history coming up this weekend at the Astronaut Hall of Fame at Kennedy Space Center when the first black astronaut to spacewalk is going to be inducted into that Astronaut Hall of Fame. You are looking at Dr. Bernard Harris Jr., um, who has logged hours and hours, traveled more than 7.2 million miles in space. And uh, joining us uh, live now via Zoom is Dr. Bernard Harris Jr. And Dr. Harris, we really appreciate you joining us this morning here on Fox 35 News Plus. Good morning, Garrett. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. And I, I appreciate you joining us. I, I'm really excited to talk with you. I first want to get your thoughts. We showed a couple of those, uh, those photographs. When you look back at that, what, uh, what comes to mind? Oh, wow. It brings back the, the early training and preparation for the, the missions and then also the mission itself. I think one of those photos showed uh, of me in an EVA suit, extravehicular activity suit. That's a spacewalk suit. And boy, does that bring back memories. I, I would imagine so. So uh, talk to us about how you became inspired, first of all, to be an astronaut. Well, I've been fascinated with science and science fiction since I was a kid. And when I was 13 years old in 1969, I know it, that means I'm old, I saw Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin land on the moon and I was hooked. I wanted to follow in their footsteps. And so talk to us a little bit about your career. Um, 438 hours, tra traveled more than 7.2 million miles in space. That's a lot, Dr. Harris. It, it is at the time, but it pales in comparison to what the guys are doing, guys and gals are doing now on the International Space Station. But uh, I had to decide when I went to college what major I would go into that would allow me to apply to the astronaut corps, and I decided to become a medical doctor because I found out that there were medical doctors that were going to be needed for space flight, especially for long duration space flight, what we're doing now, and anticipating you know what's happening in terms of us being in low Earth orbit and then going to the moon and Mars, uh, we are certainly will be in need. You became the first African American to perform a spacewalk. Um, what did that mean to you? It was very special. You know, as an astronaut candidate going through basic training, you know, you're just dying to get your first flight. And then on top of that, you know, you do the all activities that are necessary for each mission. But the pinnacle of being an astronaut is actually donning that suit and getting outside. I should say one of the pinnacle, because some of my guys who haven't done spacewalk would probably argue with me. But it's being an astronaut is incredible. And this notion of being outside and having that God's eye view of the Earth is just incredible. Yeah, take us through what it is like being out there. I, I would imagine it is incredible and also it has to in some ways be frightening. In, in some ways it is. Um, there's a lot of preparation that goes into a spacewalk. We first have to get into our, our suits early on a few hours before the actual walk. We have to do a pre-breathe to prevent decompression sickness when we go out to a uh, from high pressure to low pressure. And so once you were done with all of that and you open up the hatch, I remember looking down on the earth as we were cruising by at 17,500 miles an hour, it gets your attention. And so that first step was, of course, a doozy as you're stepping out of the airlock. But once we got out, we hooked on with our lines and we were able to be secure with the ship and do the activities that were necessary for, for the mission. You, um, you talked about the expansion of kind of the space industry uh, now, um, and uh, what would your message be and what is your message to, um, to kids who may be interested in, in, in becoming an astronaut um, just like you were? Yeah, I'm glad that you asked that question because we are in the 21st century where technology is driving everything that we do. And now the step the steps that we're making in low Earth orbit, where we will have manufacturing facilities in low Earth orbit, that's 250 miles above the Earth. And above that, of course, there'll be all sorts of activities between here and the moon, and there will be colonies. In fact, a number of nations have announced that they're going to put colonies on, on the moon. And that's going to change uh, not only what's happening in space in terms of technology and innovation, but it's going to impact here us here on Earth. 
So our kids have to be prepared for that. And you know that moniker STEM education or STEAM education is going to be key to our kids' future. After your career as an astronaut, you uh, founded the Harris Foundation. Could you talk to us about uh, some of the work uh, that the foundation does and, and why that means so much to you? Yeah, I've been involved in math and science education for over 30 years now, uh, primarily because of what I just talked about, the future. You know, the future of this country, the economic prosperity uh, lies in the innovation and innovation comes from knowledgeable people. So we have spent you know, over 30 years having programs all over the nation, including Florida, where we had the uh, summer science camp, Bernard Harris summer science camp there for middle school kids. But we have programming and we do scholarships uh, around the nation in order to promote STEM education and its importance for ensuring our future. And, and, you know, that's an important step because we know those opportunities in space you talked about are going to be there. Uh, and so now it's uh, taking advantage of that and, and making sure that uh, that we have the folks to, to fill those uh, important roles. Yeah, and those roles are going to be high paying jobs. So when you think about the different communities that are around the nation, it is important that we underscore that those STEM jobs are some of the highest paying jobs out there. So if your uh, goal is to uh, be able to take care of yourself and your family, that is the way to do it. Being inducted this weekend into the Astronaut Hall of Fame, Dr. Harris, when you uh, found out about that, um, what was your reaction? I, I was very excited. Um, there have been, you know, a portion of the astronauts who've gone in space who've actually been inducted into the Astronaut Hall of Fame. So I'm very honored. And I like to say very blessed to be selected to join this illustrious group. And I'm looking forward to the ceremony on Saturday there in uh, Cape Canaveral in Kennedy Space Flight Center. It's probably not something that ever crosses your mind uh, as a possibility as you're going about your day to day uh, career. Um, I'm not sure if I understood that question, but the but the notion of uh, being selected. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, me. when you as you as you are working as a as an astronaut, it's probably not something that ever even crosses your mind that one day I'm going to be inducted into the astronaut Hall of Fame. So that has to be pretty cool. It, exactly right. You know, it's not like you start your training program saying I'm doing this so I can be inducted to the astronaut Hall of Fame. No, you're doing it or I did it because I was fulfilling a childhood dream. And my dream was to make a significant contribution to the advancement of the space program. And I think that I have done that. And so um, I get a lot of gratification in that. And the Astronaut Hall of Fame, it's icing on the cake for me. Now, I also, before I let you go, you know, we've talked about a lot of these, um, your, your experiences in space. But there are also greater life lessons in that. And I know you recently wrote a book um, that, that kind of highlights uh, some of that, if you uh, wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about that as well. Kind of yeah, the so I, I, wrote my, I wrote my first book called Dreamwalker about 10 years ago. And the last couple of chapters, I talked about the power within. Uh, I'm all about inspiring people to reach their aspirations. So what I did is I took that chapter and expanded it in this new book called Embracing Infinite Possibilities to help folks find out, you know, find who they are, you know, because a lot of us are lost in this world. A lot of us know what we want to do, but don't have the skill set to do it. And so this book uh, tries to en enable them using sort of my life lessons or some of the issues that you have when you're going after a particular goal. And one of the things, the subtitle is, is overcoming fear to reach your highest potential. And I put that in there because a lot of times we will come up against obstacles or we will fail and we will think that's the end. It's not the end. Failure is only the beginning of ultimate success. If you have the stick to itiveness that's necessary to move forward. And that's what the book is, is all about. Dr. Bernard Harris, Jr., uh, former astronaut and uh, incoming astronaut Hall of Famer. Congratulations uh, on that honor, that uh, ceremony coming up on uh, Saturday at the Astronaut Hall of Fame at Kennedy Space Center. And uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to uh, speak with us this morning here on Fox 35 News Plus. My pleasure.